giving bath, putting the, the sandalwood, making the idol very beautiful. For whom? For the senses, for the mind. And the mind remains outwards, objectified. I think this is all it is. And I am doing it. The Lord is only a statue and I am decorating the Lord. I am doing the puja. I am ghisofying the chandan. I am adorning the clo clothes to the Lord. Oh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I am, but still, thank you for giving this opportunity, but I am doing it. <laughs> this is the problem. And this needs to, this sense gratification that is involved, that needs to go. Otherwise, we get caught up in that. And when this, even this last uh, straw within the mind, see, it's better. Rather than getting involved in the world with your activities and with your senses, it is better to do the puja. Better than the puja, it is better to chant the name of the Lord or study the scriptures. Better than study the uh, study of the scriptures is to remain in uh, devotion to the uh, Lord or remain in contemplation of the truth. Both are one, one and the same. Because as I explained before, scriptures are many, 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 many words put together, isn't it? That makes, yes, it's better than many, many objects that you have to think about. Better than that is many, many words of the scriptures which at least tell you what the goal is, what you need to do, what that truth is. But better than that is holding on to that one home which can deliver you to your destination. And as long as that is practiced with faith and uh, diligence, one will get there. And when that happens, when you even drop this obsession with the scriptures, this uh, f feeling that I am doing something, then in such a pure mind, in such a purified mind, the pure unbroken uh, love for the Lord happens. And how is this pure unbroken love? It is Taila Dharavat. That means it is like a continuous stream of oil and when you pour water, there can be drops when, they are, when it is poured out. But when you pour oil, there are no drops. It's a continuous stream with no air bubbles in between. And this way, your, your mind is continuously, Taila Dharavat, continuous stream of love and devotion is flowing towards the feet of the Lord. This happens. This happens. This is the stage of dhyan. Till dharana you were trying. Now this is dhyan. Dhyan has to happen. Meditation has to happen. Such a person is lost. He is a gone case. To the world. He is good for nothing for the world now. While he is in that state. And as he matures into the, in that state of devotion, Eventually, he, let's see what he says. And, the, and in this manner, these 12 con and gains a pure unbroken flow of devotion, yes. And in this way, these 12 points were given starting from verse 46 till, uh, till here. And uh, I think it was from 46. Ah, from verse 46. Till this verse 49, the 12 points are given and here it is told that these 12 conditions, uh, 12 ways are the way to condition yourself so that this last stage which is kevalam uh, avichin anuragam lavade. Anuragam means, arag means attachment. Anu means extreme attachment. Extreme attachment to whom? Not to the world of objects and beings, but to the Lord. And that is called Anurag. And when uh, this will happen only when all these conditions have been accomplished by a devotee. Whether such a devotee follows the path of yoga, whether of Vedanta, whether of Ashtanga Yoga, whether of Kundalini, whether of Nath Brahma Yoga, whether of Japa, whatever methodology he may employ. Tantra Yoga, it does not matter. 
but these 12 conditions which have been enumerated by Narad, sage Narada, they are inevitable uh, for him to have been inculcated. If these 12 conditions are not there uh, in the devotee, he will not come to that stage where he can glide into the love of his heart. Whether, whether these 12 conditions are practiced for the world or for the Lord, same thing. If you want to achieve anything in the world, again these same 12 points. If you want the Lord, also the 12 points. Also the same 12 points. And in this way, uh, 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 Sage Narada is telling us that to gain that love of the Lord, to gain that grace of the Lord, we need to become perfect. We need, we need to clean ourselves up and cl this cleaning of our mind is brought about by ha having the, going through these the 12 conditions and this way in the Sutra 15 which concludes these 12 thoughts it says Satarati Saratarati Salokan Starayati Satarati Satarati Saloka Starayati. Ah, he says that such a person who has come to this point where the, the devotion and love towards the feet of the Lord is continuous, unbroken. Such a person alone, he crosses, indeed he crosses, he helps others also to cross. Tarati means swim. Yes, he crosses, he swims across. But he also, Tarayati, he helps others to swim across. He, he swims across, indeed he swims across. But he also helps others to swim across. Therefore, this stage of uh, helping others is not you do a six months yoga course and you become a teacher. You do a two, three years of uh, living in an ashram and you become a Vedanta teacher. <laughs> you do a little bit of, uh, spend some time uh, with some master and you become a high. And what is your qualification? I spent six months with that great master, therefore I am a qualified teacher. There are cases like this here. See? That is not your qualification. The qualification is when the mind is having a continuous flow towards the divine. And it is not a willful effort. Now, see that in the stage of Vaikari Madhyama Pashyanti Para, which is that stage now? Pashyanti. Pashyanti. Where the, man, the, the, the chant of the Lord or the love for the Lord is of its own accord happening in your mind. Not mechanically, but your love is there and your thrill is happening, tears are flowing. They may or may not, but that your observation is that you are lost in that. Such a person alone is authorized by the scriptures to initiate another person into <laughs> mantra, not any, any Tom, Dick and Harry. Such a person alone. Whether it be yoga, whether it be Vedanta, whether it be devotion, mantra diksha if you have taken, only you must take it from such a person. Otherwise it has got no meaning. Initiation is supposed to be taken only from such a person. Because once, it comes to para, then he is no longer, how will he give you? <laughs> so here it is told that uh, such a person alone crosses across the ocean of Maya. And not only, huh? Once it comes to para, I mean, as a, his mind is still functioning. Mind is gone. In para, 
the mind becomes one with its source in pashyanti the mind has developed the acumen the ability to remain single pointedly surrendering itself to the feet of the lord and it's involuntarily happening now and it will only involuntarily happen when you have invoked that love and devotion Me- mechanically if you chant it will not happen and when if if you go to the next stage which is para when the mind gets completely purified of all other uh, uh, what you call dirt within it as a result of this continuous flow towards the lord eventually are why am i repeating the same thing again and again mind enjoys variety somewhere around that the silence happens it merges into the river begins and merges into the ocean the mind begins its journey and merges into its beloved and where it merges into the beloved the mind then what is the recognition that i was always my beloved with my beloved i was never away from it unnecessarily so therefore uh, uh, here it is point here is that such a person alone can cross across the ocean of maya only when such a person has this complete understanding of all the 12 points and he has created these conditions by the grace of the lord within himself then alone he has crossed across the ocean of maya and such a person alone has the capacity and the ability and the readiness to help others to cross over the maya also and and such people you see the various uh, mahatmas when they used to chant, sing the sankirtan let it be prabhu pad whether it is uh, anandmayi ma from bengal whether it is eknath maharaj whether it is nyaneshwar maharaj whether it is namdev maharaj when they used to sing the sankirtan of the lord it used to go for hours and hours and hours together does it feel are you you don't get tired other feel get tired but they are all that was a special time in maharashtra when all these saints were born at the same time about 6 7 of them and they used to have chalo we let's have a party <laughs> go to the temple start chanting the lord's name ram krishna hari jai ram krishna hari jai jai ram krishna hari jai jai ram krishna hari and it will go on and on and on and on one gets tired the second one starts but the other one becomes soft then the next one then the next one then the next one whole nights used to go in that ecstatic chant no tiredness how can the name taking the name of the lord make you exhausted it is not possible if it is done with the right attitude with the right frame of mind with the love and devotion it keeps you awake it keeps you inspired you tell a professor hey you have to take four classes every day 2 hours long <laughs> he'll say first increase my salary <laughs> then i'll see if i can take lecture for 2 hours <laughs> each class for four four or five times a day he will not why he is not inspired to do that but those people i know in ba- banaras hindu university there are some great masters who are still professors in uh, the university they whether they get the salary or not get the salary they are not worried but they will go every day they will take the class they will te- teach the students and they will come out salary pata nahi which account <laughs> no idea one ashram is there there they, i went there to stay initially and that that mahatma of the ashram he is the head librarian of banaras in the university so every day he goes four hours to the university takes care of all the books and everything and but gets up in the morning at 3 o'clock does his shri vidya upasana chants the durga saptashati and deep deep wonderful person and then 9 o'clock goes to university 
again all whatever he has to do come back by 1 o'clock again take a little bit of rest and then the evening puja begins see <laughs> You can't get tired when you are taking the name of the Lord. You can't get tired when you are talking about the truth. It's not possible. So these these uh, great Mahatmas who have come to this point where they have uh, they have where the devotion towards the Lord is an is an in an and here not in continuous continuous stream they go into ecstasy they lose the sense of time and space and world and everything they are just immersed in that and eventually that takes them into silence and they and because the joy of the proximity of the divine is very very potent so they they keep doing it again and again and again just like we keep going to sleep every day anywhere we get a chance we go to sleep <laughs> why only at night <laughs> similarly these mahatmas anywhere they get a chance they go into ecstasy start with the name and the name take that devotion takes you takes them into that transcendental state such people alone uh, is a master our masters who have the capacity the readiness the ability uh, uh, the potential to grace others initiate others so that they can also cross this ocean of maya it is out of deep compassion towards the humanity because they see this whole humanity not other than the expression of the divine and therefore there is not that they go and uh, yes how it expresses through each master is different one may be a vivekananda go and roar to the whole world but another person may be a person like eknath maharaj who converted who translated the gita into the local language and spread it around to to all the people in spite of all the condemnation from the educated class the brahmin class at that time so also nyaneshwar maharaj also did the same but they are not worried about the repercussions by from the society they know that this is the right thing to do this eknath maharaj he had a son akan some hari something and his son was also educated in scriptures and having been educated in scriptures he was also a brahmin because eknath maharaj was brahmin he was also brahmin but he was on the side of all the other brahmins why my father is uh, disrespecting the scriptures by speaking about them in the local language this is not right and one day because of his love for the father and he could not speak out to his father so he Uh, quietly packed his bags and uh, told his wife and his uh, that pack up your bags, take the child, and we'll go and live in Kashi. There, people respect Sanskrit. So, yes, naturally, Eknath Maharaj said, "Hey, beta, why are you going?" He says, "No, no, no. You are disrespecting uh, the Sanskrit language, the language of the gods. Scripture should be spoken only in Sanskrit, not in any other language." and after lot of uh, request still the son did not agree and he went to kashi varanasi and started living there uh, nyane, uh, eknath maharaj one year two year are come back come back no i will not come back until you stop so one day after four years he goes to kashi and he says but actually son is calling the dad come and stay with me So he says, "Come back with me. Why don't you come? People, I want you. I want to live with you. You and I want to play with the grandchildren." He says, "I will only come, only if you give up speaking the Gita and the Bhagavat Mahapur Bhagavat Mahapuran in Marathi." 
you will only speak in sanskrit he says i will not speak anymore i give you a promise and he said you will not go to uh, untouchables house and eat food there you, all those things that he did not like as a brahmin he told his wife he says okay i listen to you whatever you say i will do that but you come back home the son and the da- wife and the her daughter they all come the child they come back and now uh, the the father is not speaking the people are saying are please uh, uh, eknath maharaj please take the lecture P- please tell us the gita please tell us the stories of the puranas so uh, no 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 problem listen to my son the son the hari he started uh, his discourses and as he started his discourses first day eknath son eknath maharaj son wow he must be also good he started in sanskrit big crowd first day second day half third day half of the half fourth day half of the half of the half and slowly slowly within a week nobody there because all going bouncers for common man there is nothing yes it may be very beautiful but they are not able to understand so he became but he did not get disturbed he says no this is the right thing i will continue and even if there was one person or two people he will sing the bhagavat mahapuran in the sanskrit language and come back one day one old lady came and she said to and father did not say anything he said that is prarabdha he has to go through he is singing his name of the lord in his own time okay very free time for four years <laughs> and on one one of these days one old woman comes to him and she says that you know uh, i am a very i used to be very rich but now life has made me very poor i am in poverty but very long time ago i made a commitment to the lord that i will feed 1000 brahmins but today i don't have any money to feed 1000 brahmins but oh eknath maharaj i consider you to be more than 1000 brahmins put together so can you please come to my house to have food so that my wish before i die is completed he says i cannot do that you ask my son so the the, the woman asked the son that can i take your dad i will call you also you also come he says okay but there is one condition that my father will not eat food cooked by you i will come to your house and i will cook the food she says okay he goes the son cooks the food and serves the food and the the woman she serves the food to both of them and as they are eating he notices from the corner of the eye that from all the dishes that he has the father has one extra dish <laughs> which means that woman has secretly cooked one dish <laughs> and given it to him and father is enjoying actually he she didn't serve he only served his father and himself because he does not want her to touch the food and serve and when that happened he didn't this he became disturbed but being a cultured man he controlled itself no reaction then after the food was finished not to trouble the old dilapidated lady to bend down pick up the plates throw them he said okay it was you know that uh, banana leaf was there so they were eating on the banana leaf the fa- the son said dad don't worry i will pick up the banana leaves and i will throw them out to the cows he said okay son the woman also did not say anything he must be helping young boy and he picked up his plate and he picked up his father's plate banana leaf when he picked up the banana leaf he saw there was another banana leaf under it he picked up that also then he found another banana leaf under me then he picked up that also he picked up thousand times he kept picking banana leaves and at that time it dawned in the that uh, mind of his son that studying shastras and being uh, what you call obstinate about speaking of shastras only in the language has got no meaning this lady out of her devotion to the 
to his father you know has gained the grace of his father the father his father is doing so much good to all the people who are who just merely out of faith are coming to him and they are able to appreciate understand practice certain certain practices in their life why because their his father was able to translate that those secrets those stories those sadhanas those techniques to them in their own language and from that moment on the son said that i am wrong you are right suddenly the arrogance that i am a pandit that i am a brahmin that i am a, a scholar in sanskrit that scriptures uh, that the brahmin must only speak in sanskrit language all that melted away from that son that was the moment of his maturity but for that patience is required by whom by the father isn't it you have heard of living with the himalayan masters have you read that book ha 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 you read you read you must read living with the himalayan masters he was also a young boy born to a couple who were old in their age but they met one mahatma and he said they said our life is going to finish when there is no we wanted a child he said you yeah, take this mango you will have a child <laughs> but one thing is there that that child after he is 12 13 years old he will become mine you can enjoy him for 12 years okay they said okay and before he became just before he was 12 they passed away the sadhu baba came took the son and took him to his ashram to his cave in himalayas now this young child he does not know anyone else but that sadhu baba he is a great realized master but for him he is just his grandfather so whatever his father, baba said he used to fight with him argue with him discuss with him and if he says beta chant gayatri mantra man why should i do some sadhana why should i wash your hands before eating food why should i for everything argumented and one day in that attitude of uh, uh, rebelliousness he went away from his teacher from his guru from his grandfather from his teacher whatever you may call him and on the way he met one baba and that baba said he was just by looking at the wood he would light the fire he says how did you do that and that baba was also quite evolved so he said uh, i did that by chanting gayatri mantra he said i also want to do how do you do it he says you have to chant 200000 times gayatri mantra without a break without eating without drinking when grandfather when his teacher told him he did not when he this fellow told him immediately he went he realized then he is thinking when I, if i had done it 2 3 years ago i would have i would not have wasted the 3 years so he, after he gets that ability he comes back to his guru and again familiarity breeds contempt after some time he takes him for granted again he says do something he goes away see so but guru is he who is always patient with his disciple who is always patient with 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 a sincere seeker if he knows that it in him this capacity is there to come to know the truth the determination is there the right atmosphere in the mind is there he will continue to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait chinmayan ji he studied with tapon maharaj for 7 years and the rule was he will teach only once and if you are not able to repeat it you have to get out of the class and where was the class under the sky <laughs> and one day after 7 years he started telling people there were some princes coming people coming big businessmen coming he took his clothes and his only one cloth he used to wear long one and it was torn because over use only one or two he had he said this chinmaya he tore my clothes 
He does not want me to wear clothes. He did it purposely. I don't know what grudge he has against me. Chin manager said, no, I don't have any grudge. No, you have. I know. So he went and bought few more clothes and got it stitched and gave it to me. He threw them away. You know, you only did it. And went on like this. One day, two day, one week, two week, six weeks it went on. Chin manager became very frustrated. Why? What is this going on? And he says, hey, you are not good enough. Something has happened. The, the old man has gone cuckoo, you know. And he walked out of the, the class and started walking towards uh, Uttar, uh, towards Rishikesh. Left his, I, I don't want this madman. And he was thinking in his mind, why this? Why did he do like this? It was not clicking. Why? After seven years, I have been so, I have been serving him, I have been cooking for him, I have been taking care of him, I have been washing his clothes. Why suddenly he is doing, he could not work it out. So after one hour or so, Tapon Maharaj sent someone. He said, go and bring Kajan Maya back. So he went on the cycle, da, 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 da. hey Chinmaya, uh, Tapon Maharaj is calling you back. At that time, he came back. Something must have clicked. But he would not have come back if someone had not gone. He came back. And for the first time after six weeks, before Tapon Maharaj could say anything, he said, I tore your clothes, I spoiled your clothes. <laughs> He says, now you are ready. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds funny, but this is how the masters check. <laughs> See? Now the flower has bloomed. Now it can, that last remnant of ego has been washed away. But it needed this how a teacher can, uh, brings it, bring, brings forth your ego, that you can't decide. He knows. And he also is not doing it purposely. But he just knows that this has to be done. Maybe this will work, maybe that will work. Satarati, Satarati, what was that? Sa lokan starayati. And in this way, Satarati, Satarati, Sa lokan starayati. Only such a person who has come to establish himself in that divine uh, uh, is able to help other people. Then in the chapter 5th, now. What is this in the section 1 of the chapter 5? Chapter 4. Right? Yes. Chapter 5 now. No, in your books it's not given. All these sections. It says 4. Ah, but here it is chapter 5. And uh, what is this supreme love? From verse 51 to 55 is given. And uh, now it is told that Anirvachaniyam Prema Swarupam Anirvachaniyam prema swarupam. The nature of devotion is indescribable, indefinable. When a devotee is taking the name of the Lord, is having continuous stream of thoughts flowing towards the divine, at that time such doubts may appear in his mind. Am I progressing or not? Is this what is surrender or is there something more to happen? <laughs> yeah. What are the symptoms of uh, realization? I don't know. And at that time, uh, 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 is this all that is called devotion or is there something more to it? And therefore to this, who, will, who can answer? Only scriptures can answer. And here Narad Muniji says that Anirvachaniyam Prema Swarupam, this love which is the conclusion, it is Anirvachaniyam, 
it is indescribable it is inexplainable it is you cannot put forth in words the experience that you have within uh, yourself a simple example you eat a chocolate now you explain to another person who has never eaten a chocolate what chocolate is you will use thousand different ways of explaining to him what this chocolate is but can it bring the experience of chocolate to that fellow can it can't still he will appreciate he will be inspired also but what it is he doesn't and unless he is not able to taste it and because he has not experienced it he will still remain in doubt whether this fellow is taking me for a ride <laughs> with this explanation maybe there is something more to it same way here here he says the nature of love is prema swarupam and this prema swarupa this this uh, the, uh, which is the the nature of the devotion it is it cannot be communicated through any language uh, or any other means it cannot be defined it cannot be explained it cannot be expressed but it can be experienced yes it can be experienced nobody has the experience of their absence isn't it <laughs> you say i am absent but i am there you can't say that everyone has the experience of their presence but you ask someone who are you what is the answer that comes out i am first it will begin from your birth date of birth i was born on this day to my parents i got this sister i got this brother i was born in this city i was born in, went to this school i went to this uni i went i did all these masti during the young days and i did this and i did that and 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 that the present moment you come acha you have told me who you have told me because of everything you are but it's still not defining who you are who are you but oh i am the body i am the mind i am the intellect i am the thoughts i am this i am that but all those are other than you who are you thoughts can come and go body can come and go emotions can come and go parents can come and go schools can come and go everything can come and go but who are you my friend there is only silence isn't it who you are in essence it cannot be communicated yet you know you are exactly the same way this love which is experienced which is not other than the self within our heart it cannot be expressed but it is a direct uh, experience that a devotee has as a result of his incessant flow of love and devotion towards the feet of the lord is the same uh, conclusion that he comes to so naturally this um, how, how do we know that the devotee is saying how do we know that our practices have uh, 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 brought us to this state of in, uh, of this uh, uh, infinite love infinite lord are there any signs yes there is one sign what is that sign he says muka swadanavat in the sutra 52 muka swadanavat like the taste enjoyed by the dumb <laughs> so a dumb person you give him sweet meat he enjoys it but he doesn't have the faculty to express that enjoyment <laughs> that's all you can do <laughs> no words to come out even this realized master this great devotee of the lord when he comes to that state of union with the love of his heart 
all he can say is ah, he jumps in ecstasy with no words to express ha hu ha hu that's all so just like the dumb person he has eaten the sweets he has tasted the sweets but he is not able to describe it the devotee he has taken he has taken the name of the lord he has tasted the lord meaning he has become one with the lord but he is not able to describe what this love is he is not able to describe the experience because the one who was seeking the lord he is no longer available the river which was seeking its beloved the ocean once it meets the ocean there is no sign of the river so the individuality of the river has got submerged into the infinite ocean it does not have an independent identity to say that now i have merged into the ocean it becomes the ocean brahma with brahmaiva bhavati the one who knows brahman becomes brahman the one who merges into the lord becomes of the nature of the love of the lord see the individual the devotee the seeker the meditator he is no longer available and in this way the the, the great the great devotee of the lord he is in a, unable to uh, convey his transcendental experience to the uh, listeners to the devotees to the questioners it is impossible for him he has all the uh, faculties to experience it Bo- body breath mind intellect he employed them to take the name of the lord perfected them still them but they are not the right instruments to convey the message what this experience is to the other people it's impossible for him to do that and therefore uh, he becomes helpless and therefore he remains in that state of uh, utter uh, silence as a result of this because the conscious individual seeking the conscious infinite divine when this finite consciousness meets the infinite consciousness the lord the divine within the uh, finite consciousness uh, loses 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 its identity and there is no one to speak anymore about what happened and that leads us to the next sutra सूत्रा 53 प्रकाशते क्वापि पात्रे प्रकाशे क्वापि पात्रे इन सम रेयर वंस हु आर फिट रिसिपिएंट्स दिस सच प्योर लव इज फाउंड टू मैनिफेस्ट हु आर दोस रेयर वंस लेट्स आवरसेल्स चैंट द नेम ऑफ द लॉर्ड सो दैट we are able to the lord is able to manifest through us om purnamada purnamedam purnahat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shanti 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 hari yo पांडुरंग विठले हरिनायण पांडुरंग विठले Hari 
Hello. Uh-huh. 